Oh, when you lean out, you just become full vapor. <laughs> oh, really? Do <laughs> can, I disappear? Can you see yourself on the screen? Uh, what I saw, I don't know if mine will, mine will do it, but you got... I don't know, see mine's... I'm too well lit. Something's too well lit back here. You just you became a ghost. It was very I Halloween. Just became, I, just, I just did this. Oh, man, it's so spooky. Yeah, you should lean forward and just say... <laughs> I was going to say, lean forward, say boo, and you got it. All right. <laughs> Happy Halloween. And we are on the internet. Huzzah! We're on the internet. I love being on the internet. Ah, me too. I was actually watching Twitch right before we started streaming on Twitch. What'd you watch? Uh, they stream Thursday Night Football there now. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, it actually is. I think... I saw a bunch of people streaming it, and I think you might be allowed to broadcast it on Twitch with your own commentary as, like, your head in the corner over the game. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. I, I was actually like, oh, this is, like, a really great way to do this. I'm pretty into that, actually. Mm -hmm. um, doing color commentary on sports must be, like, really, really difficult. You have to know everybody's name, and you got to be able to, like, spew out, like, synonyms for, like, stuff that you've described <laughs> thousands of times, right? <laughs> There's a, I talked to someone who worked in the data science for the NFL one, at one point, and like, they have tons of, I think it used to be tons of humans, and now it might be tons of machine learning that just like, spits out any stat out of the ordinary, and like, is handing them to the commentators as fast as possible to be like, oh yeah, to be like, this guy, he's thrown, his last 30 passes have all gone like, on an average, 2.5 yards, let's see if he beats that, I'm just like, what a nonsense number to pull out of your ass. <laughs> amazing i love that yeah so it's like, like there's all these like weird stats that i'm reading now in sports articles where it's like you know no other player in the playoffs has scored 20 points five assists and three <laughs> rebounds you know in games one two and three of the nba finals <laughs> or something like that and it's like a lot of those like nobody has done x before kind of statistics are just total bullshit right right well it's like a statistically unlikely event hasn't occurred, but it sounds cooler if we say it's never happened yeah. before. <laughs> right. Right. Um, you know who, you know, what's a, a cool Twitch channel that I haven't really caught up on yet that I, that I subscribed to though was Chromio, you know, the band. Yeah. They have a Twitch channel. Yeah. And apparently what they're doing is they they just put out an album during the pandemic and they break down every track of every song. <sighs> So what? Like, this is how we put the song together. I'm going to subscribe on my phone right now. <laughs> I actually think Jeff and Dom, the uh, the Twitch account, is... Subscribed to them? Might be subscribed. <laughs> yeah, like, we're not subscribed to many people. I, uh, I, like, I don't even know if we're subscribed to anybody, but if we're subscribed to anybody, we're subscribed to Chromio. I really... I like Chromio a lot. Yeah, I think that Chromio is, like, breaking down tracks and also playing Halo 5 and opening uh, Pokemon card packs and apparently breaking down their video, their songs. Wait, are they doing, are they doing that too? They're doing the, the Pokemon let's, stuff? Let's see if I got the wrong Chromio. Probably said I got the wrong Chromio. Oh. Yeah, I know there's a Twitch user called Chromio that is not the band Chromio. Oh, uh, there we pretty, go. Pretty disappointing. That Yeah, sorry, sorry, buddy. You just got a follow, but it was an accident. I'm sure this happens to you every day. Oh, man. Chromio official, however. Oh, man. This looks really cool. So let me tell you, let me tell you my random Chromio fact. Mm. <clears throat> it's actually not my story. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a friend's story. And um, I hope she doesn't mind that I tell <laughs> it. So <clears throat> let's wind it back 13 years or so, <sighs> New York City. So uh, this friend, this friend and I, uh, we, we have very, very kind of like parallel career tracks where uh, we actually met when we were abroad in Japan, we were both like toying with the idea of going into the, going into academia, but we had other careers that we had. And, um, she ended up sticking with academia and is now like a tenured professor in Tokyo, but like, wow. uh, yeah, pretty dope. Right. Um, but there was a point where she was still kind of just sort of figuring things out as you were, you know, want to do in your late twenties. Uh, and, uh, she went to a bar or venue or something like that in New York city. I don't remember which one. And there was a band playing 
And her friends knew the people in the band and they, so they hung out with people in the band and the guitar player in the band was like, yeah, so I'm actually, uh, you know, getting my PhD in French literature. And so my friend kind of was like, okay, this is cool. And she took that into the bathroom and then just started sobbing, you know, in in the bathroom because it was like, just like, you know, when you encounter somebody who not only is like, figure shit out but they're they like they're doing like multiple things that you wanted to do in your life yeah because like my friend and i actually played in a band together uh, in japan so like there's this dude who's just kind of like accomplishing everything uh that she wanted to do and it was just kind of overwhelming at a, po- at a point in your life when you're sort of questioning everything mm-hmm. and the band was chromeo that dude was the guitar player in chromeo damn man yeah <sighs> that's pretty intense some people some people are really good at actually doing the thing they say they're going to do. Yeah. That guy, uh, he's figured shit out. You know, he's <sighs> playing in a, playing in an incredible band mm-hmm. uh, and has his academic academic bona fides. Damn. Well, yeah. and like, they just whipped out that album, like, middle of the pandemic. Probably, yeah. like, probably like nothing. I was just like, oh, okay, cool. There's a hand-washing song now. Great. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a sort of, like, signature chromeo type song is like i'm gonna hit on a woman but i'm gonna socially distance myself right <laughs> uh it one of them came my spotify or spotify recently i was like let me be your clorox wipe and i was like oh man this is media is going to be very strange for this year and the next <laughs> yeah yeah i used to cringe when people t- would talk about like um social media and or mobile technology in songs and stuff mm. But now it's just like, yeah, you got you got to talk about the things. You know, right. it's like how many how many songs from the '60s are about calling somebody on the phone, right? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, yeah. Just wait for the the love song of our generation about sliding into someone's DMs. Yeah, to say Yeah, exactly. Hi. Friend request denied. <sighs> oh, ouch. <laughs> um. Meanwhile, here we are doing exactly what we want to do. We want to do with our lives which is Thursday nights in VS code, baby. I think it's pretty great. It's pretty awesome. Speaking yeah. of which there it is on the screen. Ooh. Yeah. Very tempting. Okay. Uh, we've taken an ax to a lot of different things. We've tried to improve our frame rate. It is still disconcertingly less than 60. Let's just keep pressing it down. Do it. Uh, the big idea we were talking about right before stream was to make sure our particle emitters aren't spawning when they shouldn't. Uh, indeed, when I shoot this here, uh, we'll we'll see like a, an elongated spray that you wouldn't really expect from mm-hmm. an actual tank cannon. Maybe an acetylene torch, <laughs> maybe a super slobbery dog. Um, not 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 a badass <laughs> socialist tank. Well, um, and, and I love the if you shoot while moving, it just it's just <laughs> hanging out where you were. Yes. And it's hanging out where we were because our side effects are not aware of our reconciliation algorithm. And so every time we reconcile a frame of action, which happens currently 15 15 times a frame, uh, we will replay all the side effects. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the funny thing is, our side effects are supposed to be aware of the frame they happened on so as to avoid this. So this could even be just a small bug. Ah, interesting. Okay. Now, before I get too deep into that, I kind of want to do something that's brainless and easy. Okay. And so this is the other thing we talked about before frame, Mm -hmm. which is that uh, I think the thing that you added uh, last time was this amazing set of thing, (sighs) indexes. So many sets. Rather than than iterate over every single thing in here, I think we basically memorized the fact that there's like 466 things. Mm-hmm. Or more if you shoot if you shoot multiple bullets. There's 465 things with no bullets in there. <laughs> uh, every frame. Mm-hmm. It's a big map. You designed a beautiful map. We've been with this map for months now. I have no desire to change it. Actually, no, this might be the only map in the game. It turns out it's a a very nice and grueling performance test for the game because like yeah. whatever we write should be able to deal with this map. So <laughs> yeah, the the only maps I want are like. The 90 degree transposes of them. Ooh, yeah. Mirror world. Exactly. Yeah. Rotation world. Um, but even then, that might be too much. It might be too much. Yeah, I don't want to challenge I don't want, I don't want. I don't want to do too much. I want to do exactly the right amount. And this <laughs> might be exactly the right amount. Um, 450, 465 entities to iterate over 
for many, many systems, right? So there's mm -hmm. several systems that we're, that we're going through that we're iterating, uh, that, that are iterating over this. Um, so we decided that was absurd. And so we're going to iterate over much more tightly scoped things. Um, luckily, we have this nice new indexing pattern right now where when an entity gets created, we index it immediately into mm -hmm. the system. And then when it gets removed, we un unindex it. And therefore, these give us, this gives us like two spots where we need to like index something or take it out of an index. We don't have to think too hard about it. These are the two. These are the two spots we need to look at. The one concern that I had is that when we do iterations such as this, line twelve, mm -hmm. um, we're not really guaranteed that we're getting a stable order across all clients for this. I don't know what the iteration order is for a set. This is a set? Yes, it's a set. It's a set, yeah. Order. Uh, so it iterates an insertion order, which is good, but not great. Mm. And the reason why is that different clients will insert, and the server as well, right? Different simulations will insert uh, different entities in different orders. Yeah, 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 OK. Um, and the kinds of bugs that will occur from this type of thing uh, will be weird simulation skew type bugs where and it'll be very subtle and very creeping and, and insidious. So to get out ahead of that, um, I would like to suggest that we create a new data structure that's a set, but it it, or it it will give you an iteration order that is a little bit more stable than what we're seeing right now. That sounds great. So something like ordered by entity ID, mm -hmm. right? Um, the trick with this type of data structure is it means that we're going to have to keep basically not only an internal set, but we also have to keep an array that basically gives us the order. Or when we iterate, we do a sort before we return the iterator. Mm -hmm. um, Somehow, I don't love the idea of doing a sort every time we read from the structure. No, so I'd like to sort on insert because it's so much rarer. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. 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 So we're going to cache that. So what we're going to do is make a new data structure. I love doing this stuff. This is the stuff I'm just going to waste my entire life doing <laughs> is making stuff that's not even gameplay. <laughs> yeah. uh, so what will we call this? Like um, a sorted set? I like sorted set, yeah. And it's a class. Mm -hmm. It's going to have a thing. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can assume that the thing is comparable using primitives. Sure. That's. Well... If what I mean by comparable using primitives, I mean something like this, or something like this, or yeah. get real crazy, something like that. Well, yeah, I think if we stick to our entity ID, which is a string, or we stick to numbers, I think that feels really safe. All right. Yes. And I think we're going to have a map that's like this as well. I, I was about to say, like, if we're going to build a sorted set, can we make it the sorted map as well? Or, yeah, do we want to... Because ultimately, I think all those sets actually become maps. Like we probably have very little use for very little use for sorted set beyond like the boolean flag, which is just like I don't know. It just has a just we just stick the value true in the sorted map and call it a day. Right. Is it always going to be sorted by an entity ID? Maybe we should just call this like the entity container entity ID map. Sorted, sorted component map. Ah, fuck it. Let's just do this. All right. Because yeah, before it, because yeah, one of those types could be entity ID all the time. Yeah, correct. And I, so internally, we have the map. Mm -hmm. And then we also have. Uh, a thing that's like the key sorted, 
keys, mm -hmm. which is this. Yeah. This, uh, this follows the thing I wanted to do, which I was actually looking at entities in the entity manager and being like, what would it take for us to put private in front of that word? Mm -hmm. um, and the answer is this and filling it with the data that we want to use. Right. Um, OK, so we're going to have an add function, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to have a key and a value. Do we care about situations where the thing is already in there? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, because if we we don't want to put it in the sorted keys list twice, and yeah, should so we can either just early out and just say cool, or we can throw an exception. I think I mean I'm okay with add being equivalent to an update. Oh, I see what you're saying. Because yes. like we might want to modify the object, um, but then yes. we know we know that sorting actually doesn't need to happen. Does not need to happen, which is nice. Otherwise, we need to do that. This dot map k equals v. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think I'm just in object land here. Add k e. Mm -hmm. Add or insert. I think it's insert for a map. Nope. Set. All right, that's going to be set. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And then now we want to insert it into the sorted keys, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe it's kind of something like for i equals So what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the kind of sort where you stick it in the end and you shift it forward. OK. Uh, what do you call that sort? Is that just the bubble sort? You just, just like throw something on the back and you, you push it to where it's supposed it to be. It might just be the bubble sort. Is, is, the, is the assumption that like as we insert entities, like they're probably the highest entity ID. So like really what you're going to do is sort it like probably like a couple positions from the back and you're done. Yeah, yeah exactly. I think that makes sense. OK, so, so maybe what it is is this dot uh, sorted keys dot push of the key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then sorted keys. Do you want dot length? Dot length. Huh. I do. And then we say let A equals I minus 1. Let B equals I. Actually, it's const. And so we're going to say if this dot sorted keys a is less than this dot sorted keys b. Mm -hmm. We're golden at this point, right? Yeah, is this continue? Yeah. Let's actually call this left. It's actually break, I think. Mm. Does that seem right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we swap them, right? It's left, yep. Yeah. Totally. One of these deals. Love it. This totally is bubble sort, isn't it? And we continue. Uh, it's one of those sorts. I think insertion sort sort of works the same way as well. Well, 
I, I guess this is kind of like a reduced version of some sorting algorithm because mm-hmm. we can rely on the property that the, that, the ex, that the existing list is sorted. And the only thing that's not sorted is the thing on the end, right? Yep. So comparing it to a particular sorting algorithm is not 100% correct because the starting conditions are different, right? Yep. Uh, Jeff, let me give you an edge case here. Okay. If the array is empty, I think this might explode. Uh, if the array is empty and then we push something on the end, mm-hmm. the length will be one. Ah, we'll start at zero. Great. And we'll start at zero. Perfect. That's the hope of yep. this type of thing. And, and yeah, we, we want to avoid these off by one errors. So, so keep me honest here. Just making That's sure. Yeah, yeah, you're totally right. Yeah. So if we have two items in there, this will be one. We'll do one iteration of this. Yep. This will be zero and one. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that seems right. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Totally with it. That looks great. Okay. Cool. Uh, is it delete? Hmm. And what is what does this return? Nothing. Boolean. I bet ah. it's like whether it actually re- removed anything or not, right? Yeah, but you were just on the page. That was for set, but it was the same thing. It said it returns, it returns the value of map dot has. Returns. Okay. Yes, that's great. <clears throat> so we should do the same. Mm-hmm. If this, I can actually kind of like if not this, then return false, right? Mm-hmm. Um. And then now we got to get it out of the sorted keys. So this is a little bit trickier, right? I think we want to do like equal this dot sorted keys dot index of mm-hmm. k. Mm-hmm. Now how do we get rid of something? <clears throat> Isn't it just splice in JavaScript? I think you might be right. Splice changes the contents of an array by removing or replacing existing elements in place. Perfect. Splice, the splice of life. <laughs> and what are the arguments here? Let's see. So we splice it. Start I. And then delete count. So okay. I one. <clears throat> yep. And is that it? Is there a third argument that would be the insert? I find splice. Yeah. Great. Uh, okay. That seems pretty good, right? Uh, now we need to actually probably need to be able to retrieve, right? So, mm-hmm. uh, well, and so, yeah, get, get is important, which I think we just passed through the map, but I'm very curious about the iteration as well. Yeah. Uh, return or undefined. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. So. Iteration protocols. Okay, so this is like a hot mess. This is great. I've I've only ever done this in Ruby. I've never done this in JavaScript. Yeah. So Ruby is really easy. You create a, a class that has a next uh, it's, function. It's delightful. Yeah. Um. Hey, look at that. An object is ready to implement the next method. <laughs> uh. So what's a little bit tricky is um, for an object to be iterable, you have a function on it called this Mm. that returns an object that does this. Oh boy. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Um, But I don't think this is that bad. Uh, So I think what we do is we do literally symbol dot iterator. Uh, And I think there's actually a class for iterator results. And what is this? Is this the tuple of the key and the value that we want to do? I think I like when you get that back. Yeah. Yeah. And okay, so so far so good. And then we return something that looks like this. Mm-hmm. Next and done, right? Next, 
looks like a function that has or value, a, or, or, or rather it has, it's a function that returns that. Yeah. Something like this. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, but we this has got to be kind of stateful, this thing, right? Because you could call the iterator multiple times, mm -hmm. and you don't want the you don't want these objects to crisscross with each other. Right. You can have multiple independent iterators for the object. Yeah. Yeah. So we can either make a class for this, or we can do a lambda type thing where we say that like let i equal zero, mm -hmm. and then here what we'd say is if i is equal to is or maybe let's just be real safe greater than or equal to this dot sort of keys dot length. Mm -hmm. Then we return what do we return? Something uh, done is false. Done done is true, right? Oh, sorry, done is true. Yeah, and yeah. then you don't have to return anything else if it's greater than. Or I guess if if it's greater than sort of keys dot length, we return done true. If it's if it's equals to that length, yeah, also done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and then otherwise we return done false uh, and the value is sorted keys or this dot sorted keys of i mm -hmm. and then we have to increment i right so it's maybe i plus plus this is horrible i plus plus i minus one or we can store this in a temporary maybe i like that better i like it better in a temporary yeah result p yeah Okay, but you're picking up what I'm putting down here, right? Absolutely. Um, okay. Now, what is it? It really doesn't like this. Yeah, what's so. what's our type script error here? It seems... Problems. Done value, done Boolean is not assignable to iterator type TKTV any... Okay, so what is this complaint here? Huh. What is iterator result? Let's take yeah, a look at that. Yeah, great question. Type... Type return. Oh, uh, you've got what you've got in there is the return type. Oh, so this is an iterator. Yes. Ah. <laughs> iterator. Is there a way? Is there a hotkey on the keyboard that is the equivalent of double click? I do not know. I don't think so. Okay. Next. Probably just wants this is iterator results of. Oh, I see. We didn't actually return the tuple. We ah. want to return. Wait, it returns a object with the following two properties. Oh, we didn't run the tuple. I see. Yep. And maybe this deserves to be in its own variable at this point. Mm -hmm. And I think we should exclamation point that, right? Uh, and oh, this to, is let yep. here. And finally, why is that an array? Is it is it that well, I have to? It doesn't see it as a tuple. Yeah, you have to do this on result. Actually, um, I don't think you can type the value key right in there. Okay. What if I did, and then I typed this mm -hmm. as TKTV. Yep. And this doesn't like it because. Do I need to set the? Do I need to set value to undefined? There's. I'm curious. There's. There's something in the MDN docs. The next method. If a non-object such as false. Um, hmm. Iterator result is an iterator yield result or iterator return result. I think we're 
doing a so it, it does want a value in there which is funny mm -hmm. um but what if i did this it works doesn't feel good doesn't feel good but i'm down with that i guess we'll find out if we needed to do that one earlier um like do we need to do we return done on the final object or the ob or the request after the final object like the will we will we get undefined in our iterator running this i yeah. think this is correct but i don't know so what to this expect. is a sorted map right mm -hmm. let's do our favorite thing let's write a unit test i feel like it's, it's your least favorite thing you know it is but i do it yeah. you know I was running unit tests today to end my day at work. It was actually very uh, peaceful. It, it's it's peaceful when it's when it's easy, mm -hmm. right? And horrible when it's not. Yep. Uh, we probably just want to do basic add and removes, right? Honestly, or, I almost don't even care about that. I really mostly care about testing the iterator. Let me do the add removes just to just to clear my conscience. Okay. It makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, let's do it. And let's make it an int. Right. Let's do basic interface. Mm -hmm. So something like uh, let's say uh, const m equals new sorted map. Mm -hmm. uh, we gotta give that some generics, right? Let's say it's by string and a number. Does that feel good? Mm -hmm. And then we do m.add or m.set. A gets one. B gets two. Is something kind of weird? We D gets three. And C gets four. Mm -hmm. This will actually be better a better example for iteration order, right? Let's yeah. do something like this. So we we expect that m.get of a, something like that. <coughs> to be two, mm -hmm. c to be undefined. Mm. And then let's do m.delete of a, And oh hell, let's get really adventurous and let's delete B. <laughs> and we expect suspect we expect everything to be undefined. Love it. And finally, we expect M dot delete of something really random to not to throw. Mm-hmm. Oh, it should be fine, right? You could also test the truthiness, falseness of that stuff. Oh, I can. Holy shit. Yeah. To be true? Should be true. Not even truthy. Yep. And then this should just be false, right? Yeah, but you might have to... Oh, I guess if we get false, we know it didn't throw. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Nice. Unexpected empty arrow function. You know what? Shut up. <laughs> um, I gotta watch my language. I shouldn't insult my code like this. It's careful, man. You never know when the machines rise up. You never and, know. Uh, yeah, Roku, we talked about Roku's Basilisk on the stream already. Oh yes. And um, let think, us let us not discuss it any further. And I think Rococo's Basilisk even too. <laughs> Am I debugging? Is it debugging? It's, it's debugging. It's doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's running it's that running. extremely long command. Yes. Gosh, that's breathtaking. Whew. Don't you love it when things just pass? I was just trying say, to, get to fail. Did it work? Yeah. <laughs> 
I hate when I forget to actually run the test with a right case, and then I find out the test didn't test anything. I had a brilliant colleague once propose this idea where, like, it would be interesting to kind of, like, fuzz test your code by, like, essentially randomly deleting lines of code, either the test code or your or your implementation code, if you mm -hmm. had 100% coverage, and see what failed or didn't fail. I love it, yeah. And the theory there is that potentially stuff that gets deleted isn't actually necessary. <laughs> that's uh, that's one theory. Yeah. Okay. I, I have a reasonable confidence that we got this right. Delightful. Yeah, I think so too. Okay. So now let's do something similar. Uh, and, and this time I want to do my kind of funky thing. I like that, yeah. Like this? Mm hmm So you're expecting through iteration to get one, two, three, four out. Do you want to stick V in a accumulator array and then yeah, start against it? I think I just want to actually stick this in there. Mm -hmm. And then we just expect the accumulated stuff to be. What does to be do with deep? Um, Let's just try to be for now and see what happens. Sounds good. So it should be a one. B C, right? Because it's it should be mm -hmm. sorting now. Mm -hmm. And there should be numbers, not strings for one, two, three. Correct. Let's see if I can multi-cursor. Yeah, what is what does that do? I'm curious. Doesn't like it. it serializes to the same string. That's great. Not the same object. <laughs> Well, if it should pass with deep equality, replace to be to be too strict equal. Ah. All right. All right. That's pretty Let's helpful. Thanks, Jest. Thanks, Jest. I'm fortunate that the testing suite that I work with every day in a language called Hack is also written by Facebook. Mm. So it has very similar uh, semantics and oh, paradigms. It's just a Facebook one. I don't think I realized that. It is a Facebook thing, yeah. Hmm. Let's try it one more time. Get that fail. This is not a test. It's a describe block. It didn't run. Oh. That happens to me surprisingly often. I was just like, I was like, why is there one success? Uh, you know what? It's weird too, because the block fail, it, it, it was marked as a failure, but you only ever had one pass. That's fascinating. Hmm. Okay, we wanted it to fail because mm -hmm. I switched the order, right? Mm -hmm. And now we want it to pass. And now. I have high expectations for this. I do too. I think your terminal is not scrolled down. Yeah. Do oh. it. Uh, do we want to maybe. Is there like a harder test? That seems. I feel good about that. 
Um, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't know if there's a harder test. There's one where it's fully reversed. Yeah. Do the same thing. Just insert it backwards. I kind of want to do one of these deals where it's like const cases equals this list of. Mm hmm. Uh, I don't. The problem is TypeScript. <laughs> this is what I insert. It's A one. Hmm. Let's just do the regular order. Oh yeah, we should make sure that works. Yeah, agreed. And then what I want is going to be the exactly the same thing, right? I was going to say, the, if, if our input is always a permutation of those four, our expectation is exactly the same every time. Yes, but I don't want to do the same thing every single time. Fair enough. Just so you know. Um, or I'm going to try to see uh, if I can mix it up a bit. Uh, Sounds good. But I'm basically doing a table here. Oops. Man. I really wish I knew what key combination I typed Me in Me too. Yes. <laughs> I wish I knew why VS Code Do you do that? Do you do that too? All okay. the time. All right. It's not just you. You're not just making me feel better, right? No. You would tell me if you're just trying to make me feel better, right? I absolutely would, yeah. Yeah. You're not playing with my emotions here. No, VS Code just pops open. And like, I never want Terminal to open. It could even open iTerminal, but it doesn't. All oh. right. So what what this really would be is, let's turn this back into an it. That's what mm -hmm. we really want, right? Mm -hmm. So we would basically say for const c of cases, <laughs> really what it is is it's like, uh, it's the input output insert, yeah, and what you want. Uh, for const kv of insert, mm -hmm. do we need to do a let here because we're in loops? No, nope. since we're in a loop, it should it's uh, scope to the block. Brilliant. Huh? And then we do this. Uh -huh. And then we expect the accumulated uh -huh. to be strict, strict equal. equal what you want. And let's actually call this what we got. <laughs> what we got and what we want. Um, Love it. Yep, all that. Cool. All right, does that pass? Why is it complaining? Uh, any string or number so this is what i was worried about the yeah. typing of this thing is going to have to be it is an array of a tuple of you ready for this i see what's, uh, I see what's about to happen the tuple of a string and a number mm -hmm. and the tuple of a string and a number isn't it an array of tuple string numbers Yeah. <laughs> That's type. That's the type. It works. It totally works. <laughs> hey, man, we're, we're home free. And I'm going to use my non hotkey to clear this terminal. And we're going to try debugging one more time. No chords for you. No chords. Oh, when you lean out, you just become full vapor. Oh, really? <laughs> Do can, I disappear? Can you see yourself on the screen? Uh, I, I, you know, I actually started this ritual. Uh, my manager told me this. Yeah. Uh, he didn't order me to do it. He 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 said that this is what he does, and I tried it, and I was like, okay, this is really good. Um, at, at least for me, I find that the way that I approach a video chat or video call completely changes when I can no longer see myself. Mm. So I've taken to hiding my image oh. uh, in Zoom. You know, it's pretty good, because you don't stare in a mirror the entire time you're in a meeting with your colleagues. Yeah, a lot of people are like, well, what do you do if your hair looks bad? And I was like, well, what do you do if your hair looks bad when you go to work anyways, right? Like, yeah. And, and I, 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 for one, not only 
does this have the kind of subtle effect? Cause I don't see myself in, in, in my peripheral vision. Mm-hmm. I also tend to look at myself when I'm talking. I feel ever like, you know, in FaceTime when you're on the video call and like, you can't get rid of the little you at the top right corner. And like you stare at that instead of the person you're talking to on the video call. I'm relieved that you, that you're relating to that because 100%. I felt like I was being a narcissist. No, you, it's a picture of you. It's like, you can't not stare at you. <laughs> right. Like what if something goes wrong behind you or your hair's messed up? Well, what I saw, I don't know if mine will, mine will do it, but you got, I don't know. See, mine's, I'm too well lit. Something's too well lit back here. You just, you became a ghost. It was very I Halloween. Just became, I, just, I just did this. Oh man. It's so spooky. Yeah. You should lean forward and just say, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, lean forward, say boo. And you got it. All right. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Yeah, it's Halloween. Shit. Are you doing anything? I'm working the polls. <laughs> That's good enough. The scariest thing in the world. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm also going to go, one of my friends is having a distance candy bar delivery slide at their house. So I'm going to walk over there after the polls on Halloween. Yeah. But no, this is this is a perfect Halloween. It's the second full moon of the month it's on a saturday Mm -hmm. like this was gonna be the perfect halloween (laughs) but no longer um that's great uh these are great tests by the way thank you for doing base case yes uh, i've been burned by these Mm -hmm. plus i think i've been in a number of interviews where i've asked people this question and the the good candidates basically do this kind of thing. Yep. Uh, you want to put you want to put some fizz and buzz in there just to really- yeah yeah we could do even an odd as well right because we could be weirdly <laughs> out by one in that regard. <laughs> At a certain point, I, I think it's tests are all totally subjective, right? There's no there's no formula to it. It's just like. As you layer them on, they start to make you feel better. Mm -hmm. But the more you layer, then you start to feel worse because the test is complicated. You got to find that right mix. Yep. Now, did we see this fail? Uh, We did not see these fail. Because it passes great. It passes amazingly well. Um, So the thing is, we can make it fail in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. We can make it fail by making our expectation not work. Yep. We can make it fail by monkeying with a test code. Mm-hmm. Or we can make it fail by monkeying with the implementation code itself. Hmm. Uh, like, so for example, we could just I say just this. take it all out there and yeah, see what we yeah. got. Now, look at this. This became like the, not master class. This, is, this became the amateur class on, on, on unit testing. Jeff, if we can't deliver a master class on unit testing... I think it counts. I think this is that might have been it. <laughs> What's in between amateur class and master class? Whatever journeyman, that is. Journeyman like, class. Journeyman class. Oh. That, um, that looks like a fail to me. Oh yeah. What do you what do you call the uh the classes that are before the prestige classes in video games? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about prestige classes? You know you get to like level ten and then like suddenly your character class can evolve yeah, in you, like, different ways. You do a class or yeah, you get to yeah. start a second path or something. Yeah. Huh. I feel like games don't really do that anymore. No, prestige prestige to me usually means, hey, we only made so much game. Start over and we'll give you a badge. I'm just like, oh, yeah. Fuck (laughs) y'all. I think Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, one of my favorite all time games, uh, did did prestige. Yeah, really good. They keep threatening to remake that, and I we play it so fast. You know, there was a fan remaster and really? they, mm. they, yeah, they put the Ixnay, the kibosh, the hammer down on that. Cause that sucker was spectacular. I mean, like I love Bio fantastic yeah. game. Yeah. Classic Bioware. Yeah. Yeah. Dragon age and dragon age one, mass effect one, Knights of the Old Republic one, all perfection. Um, I dare say we are done, except we got to use it. Oh, hmm.
Is it weird that this is a function? I think it's fine, right? It's fine. I mean, we can make it a property, I guess. Yeah, it's fine. No. If I make it a property, it's like writable. It's weird, right? Yeah, wait, is math.size writable? <laughs> Uh, I, I think it's maybe one of those like it's in the type definition, but it's probably an accessor function. You know how you can do like mm -hmm. so it's a function call anyways. Yep. Yeah. Cool. I don't like I don't like hidden function calls. Just 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 tell me that as a function. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. Yeah. I want to I want to hear it. I it's got it's got language implementer uh, privilege in there, which is a bummer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's expect. You could expect some size. Yeah. Sick. And uh, that should be probably after this one as well. Mm -hmm. This should be two. It should right? be two, and then the second one should be one. Yeah. And back down to zero. That All right. Like uh, and, and then just for shits and giggles, so it doesn't go to negative one. Right. <laughs> this has been your journeyman class on writing unit tests for a class. <laughs> you think we could charge like 99 cents? for the ad admission to the stream for that. We Man. can't even charge money for this, this stream. So I was gonna say, where pe are we people, going? people should pay us 99 cents for that. that yeah. That's a, that's a lifetime of value for just a dollar. Yeah. If this is this was, still cool to learn to code, is that still, is still, uh, still a popular thing? I, you know, honestly, I hear that it's out of fashion these days. Is it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. We're, 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 we're coming out of style, yeah, which that, is fine. There's no money in it. Once, once Mark Zuckerberg gets his way and, uh, the internet becomes completely controlled by the government. Problem solved. Yeah. What is that what Zuckerberg wants? It was like, it's sort of like, or does he want to be the government? Is that it's, it's right in the middle, but my interpretation of it is that he and Facebook favor increased regulation because they are the only ones who can keep up with it. So onerous regulation gives them a de facto monopoly. That's a complicated political position to be in. Because in, in general, I'm kind of pro public ownership of many things. Mm -hmm. Where public ownership overlaps with like oppressive, non-transparent state control is a little bit tricky. When right? it's the, the current complication being like how who bears responsibility for the content on the internet and like what is the responsibility of someone moderating it. And for Facebook to say like, well, you know, we'd be happy to comply with any any laws you set forth for us, um, but it means that like you couldn't start a new social media network that complies with those laws and still like can't be sued out of existence for failing to moderate properly. Yeah. So deeply cynical take on my part, but like, well, yeah, I, I guess China is that way, right? China, well, China has like very very deep regulation of the internet down to like they can control DNS, right? They yep. can control probably BGP even. Um, so what uh, what is the outcome over there? Do they, do they have crazy QAnon people in China? I'm sure that must exist to some degree, right? That's, I mean, that's a good question. Yeah. I hope so, because it can't just be, we can't be the only ones who have to deal with this bullshit. This is the most incredible sequence. <laughs> Brackets that I've seen. Well, I want to throw it out there. You wrote, you wrote it perfectly the first time, too. You were just uh, like... Oh, I, I don't think me... I did, because you were like, that should be an array. Oh, so that's I true. Like, okay, yeah. I think, it, I think I was wrong. Yeah, that is that is a, a bracket of beauty right there, though. Yeah, this this in particular, this this thing right there. <laughs> what a Marvelous. I need to blow that up. Oh, come on. Come on, Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I got to zoom back out. It's going to take just as long for me to zoom back out as it did for me to zoom in. Oh, I'm, I'm there. I was wrong. Whew. Did it. So I was listening to, uh, do you know who Matt Taibbi is? 
Yeah, I just I was just hearing about him because they were lumping him in with Glenn Greenwald among people who fled their journalistic organizations or something to start their own blog. Yes. What, what's his shtick? So uh, Matt Taibbi, uh, well, he and Glenn Greenwald uh, go way back because I think they started The Intercept together. Oh, interesting. Uh, okay, Taibbi so was like one out. of the star hires initially. Um, and Taibbi in the aughts was like very much like the kind of like rock star muck raping journalist from mm-hmm. Rolling Stone. And he did a lot of exposés on different things. I struggle to remember his, his kind of like cornerstone kind of thing, but like he, he, he's, he, he was, and, and continues to be like very much uh, about sticking it to the man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think he takes himself quite as seriously as Glenn Greenwald does, but I think they're very much cut of the same cloth in the sense that they're they're kind of left people, but not of maybe maybe but probably more Gen X than than millennial. Um, in the sense that a lot of people dislike their sort of civil libertarianism mm-hmm. um, because you know, like we're gonna we're gonna get pretty close to like doing like the four quadrant. <laughs> political spectrum thing but like <laughs> it feels like the mainstream is um can very much get into sort of like the centralist like we should police uh language or that that type of thing whereas i think the greenwald and taibi very much fall in the camp of like uh if you attack free their line is like if you attack free speech then you're really just hurting yourself as a progressive because it's more likely that like mm someone conservative is going to be in power and they're going to, they're going to use whatever, whatever tools you give them to ultimately come back and bite. you. Anyways, Taibi has a, has a, has a, has a podcast Hmm. um, called useful idiots. Um, And uh, he had on his show recently, someone who asked, who used to work for Facebook as an ad targeting person. Ooh, weird. And this person, I forget his name. It was a, it was a Spanish name. Um, and I think the dude lives in Spain now, which is cool. That's what you can do with your Facebook IPO money. He's like, yeah, I, I recently moved to Spain. He was very casual. He's like, I moved to Spain. And I'm like, he doesn't sound like he has a Spanish accent whatsoever. I don't know if he's an EU citizen, but like, he was just like, yeah, I, I, moved to Spain. I wish I could. Damn. I moved to Barcelona. I just like, I just, I just got up, you know? It's kind of like a Woody Allen movie where he's just like talking about like, you know, I've got this, you know, this apartment in Manhattan on the east side. It's got like the spiral staircase in the middle of it and that sort of thing. And he's like a he's like a movie critic, right? Like somehow they pay movie critics $500,000 a year in the year 1972. Or I can't even comprehend that life. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so the guy who came on, uh, you know, so it's Ta- Taibi, I, th- I think he, he's he's going to be like a kind of provocative interview or whatever. But like, and he's going to he's going to bring provocative people on there. He's not Joe Rogan or anything like that. But sure. like, yeah, yeah. He's gonna, um, although he was on Joe Rogan. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, it's I'm like I'm very sympathetic to like free speech absolutism and like exactly that argument that like in fact if you whatever whatever levers of power you put in there will be abused. Yeah, but at the same time, like. I feel like I got just like totally dissuaded of that argument like so many years ago. And I was just like, but actually like you can't shout fire in a theater and you probably shouldn't like you step your way down main street. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's a, there's a lot to be said about the liberal ideal and where, where it succeeds and where it fails. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, like, cause, cause outcomes matter, right? The, the actual uh, positions matter. It's not just like, it's okay to have a position, but the, but the content of the positions themselves matter. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Although, you know, taken to its logical extreme, then you could ask the same question of like something like voting or democracy. What are the mm-hmm. outcomes of that? And totally. it's pretty fucking bad right now, right? <laughs> well, propaganda, even... pr- propaganda right now is so powerful that like it makes a very practical material case against democracy. You know, I was going to say like, I mean, I'll just, I'll just keep digging into that one. But uh, do we like, do we even have a democracy when like, you win elections without a popular vote like it's this it's this weird sort of amalgam of really fucked up things stuck together and people are just like vote and i'm like but like what if it doesn't matter because like you got gerrymandered out of your representation so yeah yeah totally so 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 the gerrymandering thing kind of clutters things up or pollutes it um there are i think there are legitimate reasons why 
we gerrymandered the electoral college for for example because like geographic geography mattered a lot at, mm-hmm. at one point you know, it had a, totally. a very it was a very material concern uh but i i think though the implication there is that like democracy is actually this sort of like very complex assemblage of of things Absolutely. that includes free speech and it includes the freedom of religion and mm-hmm. it includes a right to an education and i you know you could argue a right to a healthy material life mm-hmm. right in order for you to actually participate in a decision making process like that right absolutely um, where was i going with that so the guy with who's who worked for facebook at at one point in time on matt Taibbi's show and he talked about how difficult it actually was to provide the content regulation that people seem to be clamoring for hmm. right and he did not think, despite being someone who wrote a book that was critical of Facebook. So this is his position. He's not just like the, the sort of like, you know, t- you know, car- you know, like carrying the party line for Facebook, uh, not by any means. But he basically was like, I don't think that the quality of discourse around Facebook is very good right now. Um, although there's probably some like low hanging fruit that maybe he's sweeping under the rug, which is like, okay, why do you ban users that make fun of Trump when you don't ban users that threaten to rape and kill women, you know, that sort of thing. Exactly. And, and I think sort of, you know, it's for this, this has been such an issue year for that, whether it's like how much, how many people are you willing to let post about like polls and, you know, like how voting or like posting accurate voting information and you're willing to like put a little thing on their post that says like, this might be inaccurate, but you're not, you're not willing to like actually take the action um, of like not spreading that information Mm -hmm. because it costs you money because you'll lose users and you'll lose ad impressions. And it's like the, the, their principles are extremely clear in terms of what they value, which is always engagement. (laughs) Right. So I feel like at least that's been, you know, uh, they've certainly made no secret of it this time around. And I don't know, people can so, so, you, you, so you would not buy the argument that it's hard to draw the line. I think, well, I think the, I think the line can be drawn very specifically. I think you can draw specific lines easily. Okay. Um, yeah. And like, that's, that's probably a great place to start. Um, right. Because I don't actually think it's a slippery slope, especially because it, the problem is too hard to automate away, and their solution is to manpower the heck out of it. So, like, it's not like we're about to have like every Facebook post has to be approved by Mark Zuckerberg or something. Well, I think they try to draw a line with the New York Post thing, right? I think what was that? that was recently, uh, there are some New York Post articles that uh, I think it was like Hunter Biden related. Oh my um, god, dude! I can't even keep up with like the level of bullshit nonsense people are posting about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, right, it was uh, the, it was the email scandal again. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I, I think it was. Uh, but Taibbi, he was critical of that. He was basically like, I don't, I don't think you should have. They should have done that, right? But mm-hmm. you know, he he's very much like the free speech absolutist, and yep. he'll, he's pretty open about that, right? Yeah, I guess. It's funny because I feel like that is sort of how these platforms have become so toxic is by free speech at pollutism in the first place. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. Hmm. So all that being said, we have a very beautifully tested I love container it. class now. I love making container classes. That's all all video games are, just like custom container classes. If, like. if, if this was React, I would call it a higher order component because oh. it sounds even more fun to say. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, do we ever iterate over entities? Does this need to be one of these things, we, fancy things we just created? So we should not ever iterate over entities, and I would like it to be private. So okay. if we if we do, it's a problem. Uh, we do fetch the entity from this, but maybe entity manager needs to just have a get entity by ID kind of function on it. I, I was really thinking that, in fact, you should just ask for everything from the specific collection. Like instead of our sets, we actually do distribute the components down into the sort yeah. of maps. Yeah, that makes sense. So basically if we had an entity that had a damager and a transform, we'd say like, give me the damager for this entity. Yep. Give me the transform for this entity. Yep. And it better have both. 
Exactly. All right. So that's that's the future that we're heading towards. Is that I, basically what you're saying? I really want that because also I think checkpointing suddenly gets much more interesting because you'll yeah. checkpoint like the transform. Yeah. Uh, I do feel like there will be a need for a sorted set and soon because okay. something like Playfield Clamped, I don't like the idea of sticking Booleans in there because I don't know what to do with a false in there, right? Mm. A sorted set could really be a sorted map that it could, it could be an it could be an extension of sorted map that actually just inserts true on its own just to fill the value field. I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's so like you don't you, have to. You don't actually get it. to put a value in there. It's just there. Yeah. So let me add one more thing. Okay. Ooh, there are two people watching the stream. They could be robots. Uh, hey, everyone on the stream, can you type something so that you can prove that you're not a robot? This is like an extremely easy captcha that we're that we're throwing at you. Extremely easy Turing test. <laughs> we'll find out. We'll find out soon if they pass. It'd be pretty. Beep boop. Hello, Twitonio. Beep boop back at you. Oh, Twitonio. Twitonio's Antonio, my colleague. Oh, what's up? Yeah, who actually uh, pointed us to this magic trick right here? Oh yeah. Oh. This is courtesy of Antonio. Oh, Antonio, you're a hero. That's yeah. it's truly amazing. Yeah. Now we have NADID everywhere, uh, and it's made our lives. It, would it saying it saying that it made our lives like six or seven times better be too much of an exaggeration? I don't think I could, so. I could, I could, I could, I could, I could bring it down to like four or five. Four or right? five, especially especially the four hours of the week that I spend in this game, it makes it much much yes, better. Yes, it's it's smooth like butter. Um, oh, uh, Antonio asked if that was today. Oh, we did it um, on Monday's stream. And I think actually Jeff might have done it over the weekend in a fit of excitement. Yeah, I think I did it immediately as Antonio told, told uh, me there... about it. I was like, <laughs> I got to sit down and do it. I got to do it right away. It's I got to like run rad. home, which is basically like like adjusting my chair, right? And then I'm going to I'm gonna like fire up. Well, I, I do actually have to change which computer is plugged in. As I say, do, I you, ever, my... do you ever like get up and like, turn around and come back and you're like all right we've done it <laughs> commute accomplished no a a actually there is a symbolic physical motion that i do for my commute which is to like take my USB C cable and um, unplug it from my work <laughs> laptop and then plug it into my personal laptop and it's actually kind of a pain in the ass because i have the, those vert that vertical stand that you yep. and i both have mm -hmm. right uh and i have to reach behind the monitor it, it, it requires a bit of finagling Oof. so there's some ceremony to it uh, that's amazing. Now, I, I will say, especially for Antonio, I actually um, I took that knowledge and immediately started sticking it in the TypeScript at my work because I was just like, "Oh no way!" <laughs> I have this problem all the time. I don't. I never want string IDs. This is so good. Yes. Fantastic. So, yeah, it's just a pro a um, yeah progress multiplier on on that stuff. Because we did such a good job on the tests on this new class that we created, I'm just going to do the has here as well. Do it. I'm into um, it. Oh, did you just add has? Great. Yeah, I just added has. Uh, I'm not going to go too crazy. In fact, I'll do it like this. Where do we do our deletes? Here? Mm -hmm. Antonio says that he also went crazy with uh, opaque types at first. I, I had fun writing the opaque types into the show notes, too, so everyone will learn about it from video 46. Oh, nice. I haven't read the show notes yet, but I will I anticipate them with bated breath. Mm hmm yeah, it's a, a true work of liter literary art. Yeah. The great American novel will come from unconventional sources. Uh, it was once said that, uh, uh, wh what was the dude's name? Um, who was the rock critic for, speaking of Rolling Stone, mm. two decades before Matt Taibbi, there was, uh, 
who's the guy I'm thinking of? It's not Grail Marcus. Uh, he was played by Philip Seymour Hoffman in Almost Famous. Uh, oh, no. I'm just Googling this. I'll tell you in a this second. This is ridiculous. Lester. He was like obsessed with Blondie. Lester Bangs? Lester Bangs. Fuck. Lester Bangs. Yes. So it was once said that Lester Bangs was the, like, the greatest writer in America, and all he would write is uh, rock criticism. <laughs> and it turns out that the greatest, the greatest literary artist of the 2020s will be Dominic DeGrotti, and all he writes are YouTube show notes. I just can't wait till the show notes are collected into a printed anthology. Yes, exactly. Uh, and taught in universities. Yeah. And, and, and uh, yes, liberal arts colleges across well, the like, East Coast. Clearly longer than Infinite Jest because it will, this will just go on forever. Yes, There's no, yeah. We have quite a body of work. I think 46 sessions is pretty good, right? We've been, we've been at it. We've got the endurance. We're pumped. We're going we're gonna to quickly hit our 100th hour of video in like a week and a half. <laughs> Dang. Uh-huh. I feel like that's that's pretty good. I think when we when we do get to uh, session one hundred, uh, there should be cake. Do we have to wait that long for cake? I'm gonna get cake anyway. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you can you can wait for cake. We'll, All right, we'll be there very fast. Actually, yeah. I've actually had cake <laughs> numerous times since the start of the stream. So, ah, uh, I should catch up. But up. it wasn't cake about the stream. I'm talking about cake about the stream. Okay. Yeah, 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 I'm with you there. Well, why don't we get cake about the stream at 50? That's coming up. That's what I'm saying. 50, yeah. 50 is actually like... Okay, a, hol a holiday cake. It can be some kind of pumpkin spice or, 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 or fruit cake or some other sort of, you know, Western Yuletide themed. Oh, I like that a lot. I just had pumpkin ice cream the other day. and Okay. Boy, was it delicious and clearly just a pumpkin spice latte frozen. So... I, I thought pumpkin spice reduces down to literally just nutmeg and, and potentially cinnamon as well, right? Like, there's basically that's it. Basically, that's it. Yeah. And your ice cream was it at least like did it have the perfunctory orange dye in it? Did it Absolutely. Have... Yeah. Okay. Yes. All yeah, right. and I'm not sure if there was even any like squashy flavor in there. It was really okay. just nutmeg and cinnamon. <laughs> have you been to the Berkeley Gelato store called uh, Caravaggio? No. On Shattuck Avenue. I have not. Uh, they're really good, mm. and they do all kinds of like. We'll just take whatever fruit or vegetable is around and like throw it in there. So they had a really good pluot flavor in high pluot season. Oh wait, is this is this the one up near you in that like weird? It's like gourmet ghetto across the street from um, cheese board. Uh, that is lush gelato. It's okay. delicious, but it's not the same one Damn. exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, Caravaggio is the kind of place that would have a pumpkin gelato that has real pumpkin. That's in made it. of pumpkin. I love yes. it. Cool. I'm just gonna have to make a gelato stop sometime yeah, soon. Yeah, that is the business plug, by the way, for this 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 stream. Um, that we, is how we are making our hard earned money. Are we being sponsored by Caravaggio Gelato? They didn't even send me any gelato. It's kind of one of these like, sort of like you know, uh, you know, aspirational things. I think I'm gonna go up to them later on and say, hey, we we mentioned you in the stream. Can you give me twenty dollars? <laughs> I'll, I'll take a pint of gelato instead. It sounds totally great. Yeah. Uh, have you? They're gonna do one of those things where they like literally pick me up by like the back of my collar and my belt. You know, they're gonna <laughs> seize my. I'll, I'll happen to be wearing a belt at the time, and they're just gonna throw me out the door. I love it. That'll happen. Uh, have you have you been to Salt and Straw in Hayes Valley since that opened up in the city? I feel like I've had salt and straw when in, in ice cream has been distributed to me in like a group event of some kind, but I don't think I've had salt and straw. Okay. Because they always have real classic, uh, they have the opposite of classic flavors. They have intense flavors. Right now it's Halloween, so they have a bug ice cream and a blood ice cream that involves both real bugs and real pig's blood. Uh and starting in November, they usually do like a turkey stuffing ice cream. And somehow they always seem to make it work. Are they still sweet? Yeah. Yeah, everything is sweet. Pig's blood, you say? Mm-hmm. Would you do the bugs one? No. We're, we're, okay. I, I will eat bugs when climate change necessitates that that is my protein source, but I'm going to hold off on that. Okay, yeah. But like eventually I assume I'll be eating that instead of vegetables. Yeah, Soylent Green what, wouldn't have been people, right? Like, I think that people are too expensive to break down. Why not just make it out of 
you know. Oh, I think I think protein Snowpiercer one. called it. Yeah. What 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 was what was the food in Snowpiercer? Oh, it was like they were all eating these protein blocks, and they opened up the the machine, and it was just like a pile of roaches being ground into a protein block. Oh yeah, yeah. We should totally eat roaches, right? Yeah. I, it's, give me a protein. It's if you put it in gelatinous cube form, I probably won't care. Yeah. Well, that's what we have to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Man, I I feel like there's a part of living in the current era which is going to be more about just total bacchanalia, like just pure hedonism. You know, like the shit's going to go to hell. Now is the time to do what you want. Right, like... That means (laughs) playing 150 hours of Hades (laughs) in one week. You should do it. Good news, I'm already there. <laughs> I'm actually going to really? have to buy, not 150, but I'm going to have to buy another copy because we actually have Hades contention in this household where everyone wants to play Hades and I will need to... Uh, Cats playing Hades too. Uh, yeah, Hades is a, a popular a popular pastime amongst everyone at this point. Oh, man. Because it's the best. It's a pretty dope game. It's pretty dope. pretty dope. I'm waiting for cross save so I can actually like move it to the PC at some point. Are they going to bring that? Yeah, there's actually a cross save button on the on the Switch menu. What they're... the fuck? Yeah, which is great because like Switch is like a little laggy sometimes. Oh man. So speaking of Hades, we talk about it a lot, but uh, it's fucking great. The production of it, uh, I, I feel like that studio is like a good ex- inspiration to follow, right? <laughs> they have like a small number of people. They don't crunch. <laughs> they really kind of like lovingly crafted this game. Over a long, long period of time, they were patient with it, and it's it's rad. It's rad as hell. What, and what what really gets me is this. Uh, oh, <laughs> uh, Antonio's. I asked him about opaque types. He said uh, opaque types become a pain, but after talking to Jeff, he's going to try them again. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but no, I was going to say what just drives me absolutely bonkers about Hades in like the best way is that like every little interaction, I'm just like, boy, it'd be really cool if like they recorded a line of dialogue for this thing that's about to happen. And then they did yeah. like everything has this, like, I don't know. It's like, they've created a, a more breathing world than like a lot of games I've played. It is like low key. Like it's like a walking simulator mm-hmm. with a little bit of Diablo sprinkled on top for, for, <laughs> for the flavor, you know, <laughs> which it turns out is, uh, extremely my jam. <laughs> yep. All right. We've got a sort of map. Let's use it. Let's fucking use it. Um, do we want to make and any of these is not going to be that but players is going to be a sorted map mm-hmm. and that's the only thing so far we're awesome yep Look at that. and I guess yeah did you want to do you want to write a very fast sorted set that is the sorted map uh, you could just do that without having to change our implementation too much true uh, this should have created at least one problem it did it, it's not a sorted oh. it's going to be a second problem yeah there should be two problems um this one. Yep. Yes, this is the one that I was expecting. Uh, should the sorted set be this? Well, we're going to have to write the interface anyway, so you don't have to pass in this nonsense, right? You're not going to have a get function per oh, se. You'll have has. You're not going to have a get. Set has a get. Uh, oh, it I just has has. I'm sorry, you're right. Yeah, yeah. of course. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess I was, just, I was just thinking, like, it's mostly the same class. It, I, I concur. Yeah. I, I totally agree. Um, and yet, the unit test around that is going to be pretty much the same. Yep. Thing. But we're going to have to write unit test it anyway, so the implementation doesn't matter. So we can implement it however the hell we want, as long as the interface... Uh, so sorted set dot ts. So I agree with you that, like, basically we can just call this whatever the heck. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I guess it's a the sorted set is a tk, and the tv for a sorted map is just bool. Yeah. Boolean? It could be really anything, right? It could even be like null. You could put null in there. That'd be really cool. Does that work? 
great. Yeah, they don't complain. I feel I feel wonderfully about that. And then rather than set, we have add. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this is just going to be this dot map dot set. No. Mm -hmm. And what? Why'd you take out the first part of? Oh, sorry, we're using the exact yeah because the map does it for us. Never mind. <laughs> The thing I already said I wanted. This dot map dot size has so far so good. Delete this dot map dot delete. Okay. Sick. And then the iterator is the interesting one. I think we just return. Can we just return the map? Oh no, because it needs to be a different type. It's an iterator of TK. Yeah. All right. Uh, so maybe what we do is we have a How do I get the iterator from I don't know. That prototype dot iterator? Do I do, <laughs> do I do like this dot map dot symbol dot iterator? that work? That'd be amazing. Oh, it totally works. <laughs> and then this is just TK, right? Mm -hmm. And then this would be iterator.next zero. Does it take an argument? Sorry, we, it can't, um, what? I was thinking we wanted the first element, but it's actually it's that dot object. Value does. Oh yeah, this is a little bit more complicated than we want it to be, right? Yeah. Now. So well, next is going to be const map result equals iterator dot next. And weirdly, it's not on there. What is the type of iterator, and can we tap into it's it? It's iterable that we're okay. Uh, sorry, the iterator is. Well, it should be this object, right? Sorted map. Uh, oh, so Jeff, go back. Do you need to call, do you need to apply the iterator on line twenty seven? Does it need a, a function? Aha! Uh -huh. Brilliant. Yeah. Now that next should work. Yes. Well, we we, we, we still need, need to, to we need to unwrap. We, we still, still need to unwrap, unwrap right? Yep, I agree. Um, if map result dot done. I think just return map result. Yeah. Yeah, that should that should satisfy it. Otherwise, return map results value zero. Mm -hmm. Wait, this has to be a whole thing. It's got to be a value. Done yeah. false. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely silly that this shit works. <laughs> Cool. Well, I just learned how JavaScript iterators function. Yeah. It's amazing this I haven't is, had to uh, use this yet. Pretty nasty. Let's, uh, let's just write that test. Let's just write the test, yeah. Let's just not think about it too it's, hard. I, oh, I'm, I'm possibly not convinced that it works yet, but I'm about to be. Sorted set mm -hmm. of a string. Mm -hmm. So far, so good. Uh, let's just change all these to adds, shall we? Mm -hmm. And then we can get rid of all these. Mm -hmm. There was probably some very fancy thing I could have done here. Um, uh, and then I think probably this is all just going to be like hazes here. Yep, well, all your, yeah. Probably I can just sort of replicate this a little bit. Um, this is a little bit redundant, right? And then. It's okay. Your line 12 is going to be incorrect. Should be size one. Yep. 
Uh, now we start to do the deletes, right? Sure. Um, that looks good. And then might as well complete the circle here. Sure. The only thing you haven't done is test the has of a something that's not in there, like has C isn't false. This one? Uh, that's delete, but there is no has C. Maybe like on line 18 between our adds and deletes. Just a case we had before for the sorted map. Brilliant. Uh, cool. Cool. Iteration order. Uh, this just gets rid of. Mm -hmm. it simplifies this tremendously, right? <laughs> I kind of am sad. I know it was it was a thing of beauty. Uh, empty here was. That should be okay. That should be fine. Mm -hmm. So it's really just this. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, this is not an array. I think you're one one array too short. Yeah. Like that? Yeah, because it's a, yeah. It's Brilliant. A All right, so let me go ahead and what if I did something devious? Call this a bracket word character, a digit, <laughs> another bracket. And actually, that's in the wrong spot. Yep. And then the word character should have that there. And what we really want that to boil down to is just the first thing, right? Mm hmm. Ah. Oh. Great. Ooh, and it's real happy to, yeah. All right, run that sucker. Let's see what we got. Okay. Should be add? Still add. Yep. I think, oh, add is the right word. Yes. Got, I think that, I think that type checks. Smash, Incredible. Smash that like and debug button. If it type checks, we already know it works. So like, I don't know. Nothing. Did you ever watch uh, John Leguizamo's House of Buggin? No. It was like a, a Latin themed sketch comedy show of the late eighties or early nineties. I can't believe that actually just worked. <laughs> Wait, sorry. Br break a test. Break a test. Well, I'll break a test. <laughs> uh, let's just break something random. Shall yeah, we? totally. But I'm fairly confident that it works. So what what is House of Buggin? I don't actually know. I never watched it. But I but I would like um I would like it got to a point where it thought it was like cool to to reference like late eighties and early nineties nostalgia on my job. So I'd like I'd like write commit messages in my code. I haven't done this at Slack. I think I was already just way too old. But I would do this in previous jobs where like my commit message would be like John Lick was almost House of Debugging. And nobody would get the joke. <laughs> and I did that for years until I was just like, you know what? If people didn't get the joke five years ago, they're not going to get it now. It's only it's only becoming a, a tougher and tougher joke to get. But I think and you know, that's, perhaps, that's, perhaps that's the name of the stream. Like, yeah, uh, the, oh, that's today's stream is is a, a joke. Duff no and Dom's House of Debugging. <laughs> John Leguizamo's House of Debugging. Um, uh, and you know that's that's. You know, it exemplifies my career nowadays. I'm just like slightly disappointed and and uh, withdrawn. <laughs> That's just basically me all the time. Uh, oh. <laughs> That's the that's our show tonight, everybody. Oof. We're gonna we're gonna end it early. All right. It's a dark note. Hey, it works. It works. Cool. All right. Well, good job, TypeScript. Good job, Jeff. I don't even know what we did. Like we just kind of messed around for an hour and a half. So I think we need to actually use these things. Please. Right? And we're we're still gonna fix that particle emitter bug before we leave. Yeah, we we definitely are. Hell hell or high water, right? Um sorted set. Bang. Boy, this is so cool. 
And I think it just works. I think if we just like run the game. Yeah, like it's just gonna be rad. It was already rad, so now it's radder. Ooh, FPS zero. You'll love to see it. Here we go. That's great though. So now we can very safely assert, uh-oh. Oh, is it, it's something, you already have a server running. I bet if you just reload the browser, it'll just start. Probably in your other terminal. Oh, no longer. I'm perplexed. Well, that was your second terminal. Debug started a new terminal for you. Oh, that's too much value add. I didn't <laughs> want that. It, did, it didn't crush your server? Eh. Eh. Uh, uh. Well, problem solved. Now now the server is dead. Yeah, I killed it. What what cause is that to die? Every time I have to do this, like in a shell script or whatever, and I'm like, all right, I spawned some child processes, and then I kill the parent, mm -hmm. and then I'm like, fuck, the child processes are still running, and I have to like jump through hoops to make sure mm. that like killing the parent kills the children too. Um, what do you what do you what is your command to kill the parent? I think if you just either either the parent throws an exception or you kill nine it or something like that. So Neither of those will intrinsically, unless you make a process group or something, right? Well, I was gonna say I I'm I'm perhaps I gotta like go deep on hey the game still works. I gotta go yeah, the deep game on still like, uh, fucking works. It's incredible. <laughs> I was I was worried for a second there. My my recollection of um, OS level stuff. What does kill dash nine send? It sends a sig kill. Yeah. It doesn't send anything. It just tells the OS to, to terminate the process with extreme prejudice. I think I think that still has to send a sig kill though. Like you can't the the OS has to kill it with something. What I mean is that the process doesn't receive anything in the signal handler at all. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So yeah, it, I think kill nine is prob will definitely orphan child processes versus sig kill or sig term, which gets sent to the server, which is then responsible for cleaning up its children. Yeah. So that I yeah, but then you have to actually write that right, unless your runtime does it for you. Maybe the node runtime does it for you. Yeah. And every every runtime is supposed to do that when you do when you do a spawn, a sig kill to the parent should be passed mm -hmm. down to the child at the OS level. Yeah. So that's why OS threads are great and Ruby threads are weird. So what I remember is that um, my buddy from a previous job actually wrote a Ruby lib Ruby gem called Joe Chill. Because <laughs> he was like, Okay. I need I need something that will kill the children of the parent. It is in essence the anti-Batman. <laughs> oh, no. That was his. That was his term for it, which was hilarious at the time. Wow. Uh, and he named the library Joe Chill. Yeah, that's quite possibly the best. And to this day, name. I'm not really sure what he did. Because uh, <laughs> I know if you orphan a process, it becomes parented under PID one, right? Like PID one is like magical. And I think that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think it's just particularly easy to orphan processes in Ruby, possibly because they didn't have like OS threads for so long. No, oh. you had to like yeah. you actually like exact a totally different process, right? And didn't own it. Oh, interesting. That might be it. And yeah. so it wasn't it wasn't a fork, is what, is what you're saying. It's so yeah. I think Ruby for the longest time was like exec, or you got the soft threads that didn't that were just like the Ruby global interpreter doing threading that right. wasn't. So that that would be my guess. Yeah. All right, sorted set. You got that sorted. Sorted. It works, I think. Right. We don't have any actual like tests on the game itself, which is kind of where they would really matter. <laughs> it, it plays. But you know what? It it plays. Yeah. It, it, it's fun. What other mm -hmm. tests do you need to satisfy, man? <laughs> Stop being a buzzkill. Uh, you can still shoot bullets, right? I think yeah. I think that means items are getting inserted and removed. Yeah, I'm shooting bullets. Slow. I'm shooting the trees, and it's very slow. It's very slow. All right. Since since that was our warm up. Okay. Yes, we've got 22 minutes left to do the real deal. The which real is deal to get rid of the particle emitters. I believe. Yes. So there was the claim that uh, perhaps. 
Pop, pop back all the way up to the client because there is a like the actual register particle emitter function is supposed to be like memoizing uh, frame and entity ID. Uh huh. Well, I believe you on the entity ID. Should uh -huh. this be an entity ID here? It should be. That should be an entity ID. Yep. Dastardly. One more. One more sweet use of that. Yes. Um, and I guess it's supposed to be getting the frame from the current client state. <coughs> Hang on, I gotta make, gotta make sure my dots are tildes. <laughs> it's very important. Uh, it should be getting the frame. It's not taking the frame per se. Well, I, I think the assertion is that it doesn't need to because, well, perhaps this is the bug. All right, so what else calls this? Let us find the references. Yeah. All right. So far, so good. Uh, it registers a particle emitter. And then when it does so, <laughs> where's the f where's the actual function? <laughs> if emitter history ah. has simulation frame params entity, emitter history add. Oh, this is clever. We actually tried to do this already. Yeah. But. I, I see well, this is an entity ID. I see the problem, which is this needs to take a frame because what is simulation frame in this scope? When, it is the client's simulation frame. But but in sync server state, it's going to write it into the current frame because that's all that's what's in scope for this instead of the frame that's being resimulated. Correct. Yeah. So, so this is this is bonkers and it's nonsense. Just got to pass frame in there. Frame number it's just uh you know it it was clever and someone forgot that there's more than one frame this, yeah this guy it's no nah, no nah. i mean it was definitely this guy <laughs> i think you just gotta change the signature um uh, in simulate wherever sim state gets set i think it's in simulate Yeah. Sync state, did you say? We gotta pass it in there. Um Everywhere it's passed should be good, so now it's just the call sites. Oh, good times. Yeah. Are we are we even passing frames in there? Sim state, does that have a frame number? Oh man, it fucking better. Damn it. <laughs> it fucking don't. Oh. <laughs> oh, we can just add it. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, put it in there. It's necessary. The fact that these are repeated makes me makes the makes the the gears turn a little bit, but mm. uh, I believe that we should worry about that later. Mm -hmm. Could we mm -hmm. simulate? This is the actual simulation frame, right? So, yep. Frame. This dot simulation frame, and that's correct. Because this is this. Yeah, correct. I meant params.frame. Thank you, JavaScript. Mm. Name params saving the day. Saving me again with your pedantry. Uh, register particle emitter, the frame. Mm -hmm. Let's add frame with this fancy, very fancy use of TypeScript types here. Pick types, baby. Yeah. Oh, uh, the comma doesn't need to be there. Pipe instead of comma. Cannot find name frame. Sim state dot frame. We didn't. We didn't destructure that. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Can you put a tab in front of the game? I think it's eaten your Zoom since it's ahead of the server. A tab in front of the game. Can you oh, say that one more time? Just like put an empty tab on your Chrome, because then the game should get backgrounded to zero. Or that. Uh let I, me, I was just watching your yeah, code your yeah, code yeah. fall further and further behind the Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. 
the frame here is frame message dot frame. Huh? Oh man, we are we are getting there. I think I think this is really gonna. Oh yeah. Oh, and then this is the reapplication. Yeah, this is the problem. Is that it? Is that really it? I think that might be it. Yeah, I think. What else registered the particle emitter? I see. Uh, there's no more problems. The damageful, maybe? Mm hmm. Oh, why are there no more problems? There's clearly a problem right there. Yeah. Thanks a lot, TypeScript. And wait, how does damage will have two? This is when you die. Does it have two? Yeah. I fixed one, but not the other. Wait. They're both the same one. Oh, uh, 30 lines. No, no, it's, it's used twice. Line 39 and line 51. So this is when you get hit. Oh, this is when you die. Yeah. And then... The, oh, the attack well, I see. System. We're just. I see. We're just. We're just checking this thing here. Yeah. The shooter system is the thing that. Ah, uh, uh, this. Yeah. This is going to be the. Yeah, the muzzle flash. Finally. Luckily, we've got this fancy thing. I really like this pick thing because it basically means that we can say we only care about these four things. Uh -huh. Of course, there is actually exactly four things on it, but um, or there's five now. Mm -hmm. and, and it means that like we can pass these complex objects in, but then declare what we care about, which is really nice. It's Yeah, I find it a really helpful pattern for exactly this sort of thing. Say what you want. Nice. OK. I have to restrain myself at work from doing this kind of thing. Cause like, you know, you just run across code that was like, you know, I'll say with empathy was written, you know, under duress and yeah. you know, you'll just like pass this giant blob of objects into a function. And then like the, like the, the body of the function is literally like return, like, like plucking one value out of it or something like that. And um, <laughs> I have to restrain myself from like trying to refactor those types of things. Cause like, they're just simply too numerous and, any individual one that I pick, uh, it's it's the wrong battle to fight sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So our, our particle emitters should now be crashing the game. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. Yeah. It's happening. I wonder why. Frame is not defined in, in shooter. Client .ts. Oh, it looks like shooter. Oh, I see. It's it's the shooter one. Yeah. Prams frame. Uh, can we do you want to run type check against the whole repo real quick to see if we missed yeah. one i feel like vs code should like maybe a little more frequently like not once a minute just check, yeah, check my repo it's never going to happen at the right time i think that's probably yeah. conceded they're correct yeah antonio says same to uh I think encountering code under duress and wanting to refactor. Yeah, right. All right. I'm glad that this found an error. Server, of course. We forgot about the main star of the show. Uh, oh, simulate oh. needs to pass in the frame here. I guess so. Though that's certainly not the client error message we're receiving. No. Yeah, I think it's more complicated. Mm hmm uh, at any rate, uh, is it just this dot simulation frame? Yeah, because the server doesn't predict. The server only cares about one thing, mm -hmm. and one thing only. Server, and it's disgusting. Simulate. So what did we? Oh, uh, mm. interesting. Oh, you know what? This is actually just one type check error. It looks like. Oh, I see. You want to run again, just in case? Yeah. This strikes me as a parcel error. I'm going to wager that. Okay. I like I like your I like your uh, gambling style. Yeah, exactly. 
So it's not my problem. It's the tools. Sounds like there's a clean coming up in our future. Exactly. It's the tools. All right, do it. Surely the children are not out of touch. Or no. The now I want to eat cake. We were talking about cake, and I just want cake. I have no. I have more no like sweets. More like apartment. a brownie. Yeah. Ooh, Would a brownie be really good right now. Jeff, do you watch the Great British Bake Off at all? I do. Did you? I do. Did you watch the most? Did, have you been watching this season? I've watched a bit of it. Okay. I, I think the last thing I watched was the pastry with the pastry cage. Okay, yeah, that was like last week. Okay, yeah. Well, you, it was an absurd requirement. And well, what was so funny? You reminded me of I think an episode prior where they were all asked to make a brownie, and <sighs> every single one of them fucked it up. <laughs> yeah, which was amazing. Yeah, maybe they don't know what brownies are in, in the UK. Is it's, that is that is that our takeaway? Possibly, because when I'm watching that show and they're like, they ask them to make a, like a naan or a pita bread, and some of them like look at the camera and they're like. I've never had one of those before. Like what? Do they do it? They're like, I've never had. I've never had a pitta. I wonder what it looks like. And they're like confused. You can just it, go down to like any <laughs> any kebab place in the UK, and you're gonna get a pita, right? They're confused Maybe it's a that it should have like a pocket know. in it. I'm just like, what have you been doing with yeah. your life? All right, all right. Uh, hasn't crashed so far. Shooting. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, it's so much better. Oh yeah. Uh, there's still that little tail there. That's disconcert uh, I, I, did our particle emitter always have lag uh well it's like when you're moving yeah you can leave it behind okay you can yes. always leave it behind but the it's so much shorter <laughs> yeah it's still maybe the particle shit, emitter but... should move oh yeah we don't have that yet yeah hey that's great uh i don't know if our frame rate our frame rate's improved right i'm like shooting a lot of stuff and we're we're chilling at like 30 some fps that's an improvement when we blow Great. stuff up though that's when it all goes to hell that's okay because that's what blowing stuff up means yeah i was gonna say do you want to kick it over to firefox real quick and just do the browser comparison i want to make a comment about the british breaking show first yeah do it <laughs> which is that they didn't know what brownies were, but I remember at one point this season, somebody made a key lime pie mm -hmm. and I'm like, how do you know what a key lime is? A key lime pie to me, <laughs> it feels like 1960s America in the South, right? That's sort of what I think of when I think of key lime pie. Absolutely. But then like Paul was like, oh yeah, I love key lime is one of my favorites. When wasn't he like my mom used to make it or something? I was just like, aren't you British? <laughs> yeah. It was a very strange, yeah. I don't know, and and and, and so to, to to like not to denigrate key lime pie per se, but it doesn't strike me as a as a as a as a culinary artifact that is framed as being sort of sophisticated, and yet like <laughs> as an American, I see everything British as being quite quite posh and sophisticated, <laughs> and, and so there was a sort of instinctual mismatch yeah i wonder yeah. if it's like that thing where like there's american restaurants in other countries where they serve you like the basket of donuts and a coke like this <laughs> around and it's just like that's fancy american food i was in um the first time i went to paris i was in the uh the latin quarter mm -hmm. near notre dame near shakespeare uh what's the name of the, the bookstore uh, whatever whatever that famous bookstore is there with the with the nook at, uh, upstairs and uh Near there was a American style diner. Oh no! Where we went to eat because uh, my cousin's from Taiwan and she didn't, she hadn't been to the states before, and she's like, "Okay, this is probably my chance to get an American style meal." Nice. And I got my typical like two eggs and, and hash browns meal, and it was friggin' terrible. I don't, I don't understand how you can mess that up, but <laughs> it turns out that that like the short order like fry from a diner is, is actually a pretty difficult thing to achieve if you're not equipped for it. Waffle House is a, is a special thing and yeah. uh, their ability to deliver greasy, consistent food to you is truly, uh, yeah, it's not. Can I admit to you that I've never been to Waffle House? Where, where, where would I go to go to get Waffle House? The South, the South, the South. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Waffle House is a very, a very South thing. Um, but like it's, it's basically, and I don't know, I would say it's basically an IHOP, but it's like, it's, it's different. 
Are you still going to move to North Carolina? Uh, I don't, man. I'm going to move somewhere someday, but like, who knows? Who knows? It's true. Yeah. It's on the list, though. It's, yeah. uh, I'm definitely evaluating, I'm evaluating future, future residences in terms of uh, climate apocalypse at this point. So, yeah. And North Carolina is relatively hurricane. Oh, look at that near miss. Look that's, at that. That's some hitbox. Look at that beauty right there. Friggin' hitbox detection there. How precise. Whew. That actually seems like a bug. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> All right, turn on the... Uh, do I don't think our de debug draw does anything anymore. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Ah, well. Uh, uh, that's okay. But, um, yeah, the... Uh, yeah, compared, compared to, like, the hurricane that just went through New Orleans, like... I don't know the the mid south. Oh hey, how's really everybody chill. in New Orleans? I know that you have family there. My my family's fine. Oh, no okay. nothing nothing bad to report as far as I know. Power's out. But like I don't know, it's just it was just a category two and like just barely. Um, so Can I ask you like two thousand four was Katrina? Two thousand five, yeah. That must have been a, sh a really shitty year for you. It was a very shitty year for. It was also it was the year I started college, so I. You weren't home. It was, it, it was like my first week away from home. Yeah. Fuck. It was really dark. Yeah. Well, and I learned, yeah, it, it was, and, and like, we didn't really have Twitter. I was a college freshman when Facebook did not exist. Like you had to be in college to be on Facebook. So like, I couldn't like check it on my folks. Have you and I talked about how we should have known that we were going to flub the pandemic response because of Katrina? Like we should have known. Like oh no, but I knew. Oh okay, so <laughs> so nothing Katrina. about nothing about this year was surprising to you whatsoever. So it was basically no, dear God, like they yeah. they fucked up dealing with a single city when they saw it coming for two weeks. Yeah. Um, and then last year there was Puerto Rico, right? So that or or was it the year before? Was it even the year before that? It was it was twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen, right? I, it was Puerto Rico? I and truly like, don't even recall. And they still haven't even done anything there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Poor Puerto Rico. They got they got it much worse than new Orleans. And I think like more, many more people died. Like, yeah. <sighs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm so, I'm so unsurprised. Like FEMA, FEMA as an agency probably should have been to completely disbanded after Katrina because of their gross ineptitude. Yeah. But eh. yeah, uh, truly, truly a wild time, but uh, who will save us, Dom? Who's going to save us? Or are we just gonna we're gonna run to uh, a safe spot and ride out the climate apocalypse? Basically, I mean, like, okay. hope, hope we making our video games, yeah. yeah, which are really just now like fever dreams, right? Like we're gonna make like a Braz like end of Brazil style fever dream of like socialist revolution, when in fact uh, the possibilities of such a thing are actually getting narrower and narrower over time. Hmm. When you put it like that. It's very. I've enjoyed this stream. It's been philosophical, right? It's been it's been good. <laughs> yeah, and it's honestly it's the right week for it because I think everyone is in in that mode. Yeah. Hey, the game looks like it's chugging along pretty good. Little... The game's not doing the game's the game's better than it has been for a while. No. Yeah. Let's let's put it that way. That's great. Uh, and then there are probably things we can do next time to. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm feeling the desire to maybe step up a multiplayer just for a fresh a breath of fresh air a little bit. I'm down. We can turn the we can turn the uh, counter down to one just to get the game back to gaming. Just to get the game back to normal. Yeah. Because uh, we've been. We've I'm kind of jonesing to do 3D graphics, but I, I feel like if we get to 3D graphics, it's going to be another another windmill we will chase down. Well, can we do can we do isometric? motion before 3d graphics is we can we still need to do like tilt the plane and do our collision detection and we can still move a, a thing around in isometric space regardless of like what we do to the camera right so or sorry we, we change the camera but we can still just like render in 2d with like 2d things in the right spot antonio says vr he is correct he vr you're right. We're not, we're not, the problem isn't that we're tilting at windmills. We're, the problem is we're not tilting at large enough windmills. Like, like VR is like a windmill with like windmills on the individual fan blades <laughs> fractally a to like six or seven degrees, right? The windmill of windmills. I love it. It's actually not that bad. Nah. You just render your, 
you're, you're, you're 3D scene twice with slight offs with two different cameras, right? Mm -hmm. Trivial. Yeah. Child's play. Um, and, but yeah, but uh, make sure you don't fall. Apparently, it's like the Y. I, I don't do VR at all. I get nauseous, but apparently, like any kind of sudden motion along the Y axis is just, just killer. <laughs> oh, God, I can imagine. Yeah. Ugh. Um, um, so yeah, so is is there is there any reworking we can do and like perhaps it's dropping some sprites in there just to placehold, but like can we do a 2D isometric rendering and then drop in 3D graphics on top of that? A 2D isometric rendering, uh, yes, we could potentially do that. Uh, I think we might be able to achieve it with some skew mm -hmm. on some of the objects that we have right now. Uh, I think our notion of collision will probably have to change though, maybe. Maybe I am Maybe under the impression that we could even do like a full 3D rendering and still have all the game logic be exactly the same. Which okay. is to say that like as long as if we do it in 3D, we're not doing like terrain motion, like yeah. moving up and down on the Z axis, Y axis, Y axis. Yeah, no, yeah. no Y axis motion. The new Y axis, rather, because. <laughs> um, it's a little confusing, but you know that that might be the big three D change is actually changing our axes so that like, um, ooh, yeah, which sounds painful. But like, you should be able to render this whole scene in three D as long as like your logic isn't in three D. It should be yep. the same. Okay, yeah, uh, that makes sense because right, we are. You'll just be moving the exact same thing. Yeah. Cool. The other multiplayer thing we could do for get for like not ready to like a multiplayer quite yet is to get back into playing together and figuring that whole thing out uh, and actually doing, uh, uh, what was it, lag compensation. So we have, mm. we have client side prediction, we have server reconciliation, we have reconciliation of server events. The missing piece there is lag compensation, which is to say that if I shoot you and it appears that I hit you, what I'm really hitting on my side is a past image of you, but the game should still credit me for that, yep. that kind of thing. Well, I think we we haven't uh, we haven't handled input prediction yet either. We've, oh yes, we've dead, done, we've dead done like, reckoning. Yes. We've done yeah, we've uh, done basic prediction, but that would be a great addition. Dead reckoning, yeah. For, um, I feel like those are pretty clear cut things that we'll know what to do with later as well. So I'm not feeling I, we can yeah, we'll we can pause and come back to those. We do yeah. It later. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. Um, we're set up for it for sure. Now, speaking of next time, next time is in fact next Thursday because we are not streaming Monday night because you, I gotta be a poll worker, man. Are doing a stooge for the man. Yep. Yep. I gotta make sure all those Biden votes get counted. Yeah. Which is ultimately an unsatisfying exercise, but, uh, as usual, it feels like an important, being an important cog in the facsimile wheel of democracy you can consider it two steps forward and one step back you know it's like okay yeah. you're, you're we're, we're we're sort of like voting against fascism those are your two steps and then it's like oh it was this dude that was the option it's it's very it's faster yeah. fascism but you're still electing like two cops but two yeah. two nicer cops who two nicer cops. They're, they're, they're they're definitely nicer cops they want to shoot you in uh, the leg not not in the heart i would rather be shot in the leg than the heart <laughs> I mean, well, ultimately, yes, I would. But yeah, ugh. yeah. So that's <laughs> that's our harm reduction argument for for the end of October twenty twenty. Yeah, like, cor correct. Is, but. Would you? Would you? Would you? Yeah, exactly. Would what? you not, sir, prefer to be shot in the leg rather wait, than the heart? Wait, sorry, you know that's a Biden quote, right? Uh oh yes, that's that was from his that was his Black Lives Matter social yeah. analysis, right? Is yeah, that, like, we should train cops to shoot. Yes. <laughs> Let's not ban the police departments. Let us not defund the cops. Instead, we will train them not to, to you know, to even like defuse a, a conflict scenario. We should train them to aim lower. <laughs> <laughs> Which, like, also, what the fuck? Why aren't they trained to aim lower already? I actually think that's like an excellent metaphor for our political state right now. Is that like? We are getting out of the situation where perhaps we will not openly deploy state violence against our political enemies, mm -hmm. but instead we'll carry on the status quo with the added asterisk that they are trained to shoot lower. That is essentially oh, what we are all desperately hoping for to happen after next Tuesday. Mm-hmm. 
<sighs> and honestly, it feels like a toss-up. So uh, I hope we, I hope we get the I hope we get the lower lower aim asterisk. <laughs> yeah, I was told that Ohio is not even a swing state anymore. They're just straight up uh, MAGA, right? Having been to Ohio, that's not a surprise. It's a bummer. Well, it's a swing state for a while, right? Ah, uh, yeah, but it is country as fuck. And it's just like it's weird for all the major cities that it has in it. Like none of them are quite big enough to become like. I don't know. Something about Ohio really just wants to hang on to strange conservatism. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's like, I don't know. There's, there's the thing that Trump was totally correct about, which is that, uh, everyone's been screwed over and the system is out to get you. But like somehow they didn't see that they were elect, they were electing like the biggest like person who will exploit them to do so. But like Ohio has been really screwed over by like multiple industrial collapses. So like, I get it. I read that Ice Cube endorsed Trump. I saw that. How? Oh my gosh. Well, I, I think it's just because Ice Cube is like a savvy and successful entrepreneur. And basically, if you're if you're a rich person, you're like, I kind of just want lower taxes. I think yep. that's that's. The, I don't think the calculus is much more sophisticated than that, right? It's just kind of like, yeah, you know, what would be good for me right now is like if they if I didn't have to pay any taxes at all. I saw I saw on Twitter today too. Little Wayne was like hanging out with President Trump, being like, "The platinum plan is going to be great, everyone. Don't worry." What's the platinum plan? That's the health care we're going to get. Oh, is it? Is it? It's like, platinum. It's but we already have platinum plans in Obamacare. <laughs> They're expensive as hell. <laughs> Do we? Wait, is that a real thing? I don't even. It know. is a real thing. Oh. Like if you go a platinum, I, I think they're platinum. That it's like a medallion system. You can get platinum, gold, silver, and indeed there is in fact a bronze. Who the fuck looked at airline miles and was like, "Aha, that's how this should all work." That's the model. Right? Uh, you have choice. It preserves your choice. God damn, it's so bad. <laughs> it's really fucking bad. Yep. Yep, it it truly is. It's a. Uh... On that cheery note, it's nine five p.m. We are five minutes past the hour. We are done with tonight's stream. Congratulations! This was highly successful. I think we we got a little bit of unit testing done. Makes you feel good about that. Yeah, our particles are no Your longer classes. particling far too much. And dubiously, we can make the claim that our FPS is slightly better because we're no longer replicating our particle emitters all over the place. Yeah, sure. That seems reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to trying this out on, on my machine too with the uh I don't Do know. Are, are our bullets too slow? I was sort of thinking to myself, yes, we don't have lag compensation, which makes it really hard to shoot each other in multiplayer. I think they are too slow. But the bullets are also way too fucking slow. Because like the bullets kind of look like you've lobbed a grapefruit, like sort of at an enemy turret. Right. And it's not that hard to get out of the way. This is freaking happening. Like right tile size over two? Let's double the speed and see where it takes us. Yeah. Shall we? To the future. That's where it's going to take us. It seems likely. We're building back better. Ugh. It's hard to say, actually. Ugh, it's a terrible slogan. I think it's the L. It's not just because I'm Asian that I have a hard time with the L's. It's just it's building back better. Build back. Build back better. Build back. I think like L. I like these bu- bullets better. Yeah. Although they really, really help you see the frame rate slow down. Mm. Do you want to? I think they could be slightly longer range too. All right, let's improve our range. Yeah. Is that? Shooter I don't like how. Shooter system? I don't even know where. Is it the bullet component? The bullet component, maybe. Oh, bullet range. Yeah. Gosh. Twice? Yeah. 50%? 50%. 50%. 360. 360. That's a nice number. Yeah, the best the best Xbox. Yes. It really kind of was actually, right? The UI is really cool. I Xbox right. Live. That best controller had all the halos. That thing and just the first time I saw a high def game, I think it was Gears of War, it blew my mind. <sighs> mm-hmm. That's definitely one. Why is it slower? Hot. I'm upset. Oh, but I could hit that tree from way over there. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm a friggin' sniper right now. That's great. Hit this I, guy? I like this. Oh, yes. I can't even see it. My face is in front of it, but I believe you. Oh, oh and I, I, switched to the, I switched to the Zoom window, and now I can see it. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you should I be. i to back it up. Can I hit the wall from here? 
Oh my God, this is satisfying. Yeah, I think this is a, a vast improvement. The, when we turn the no, turrets I, back on, they're going to be able to shoot you from a lot further away. So they're uh, gonna, It's going to be horrible. The game will be basically unplayable, right? Because we're going to have like 20 turrets all shooting you from like... With faster bullets. 360 pixels away. Whatever, we can do it. Yeah. <coughs> all right, sweet. Well, excellent Thursday night. I'll see you in a week. Uh, good luck to us and the world. Yes. Vote no on Prop 22. No on Prop 22. That was my kind of like subliminal thing. We're going to splice it into the into the archive video too. It'll just be like, you know, a couple frames of the text. Vote no on Prop 22. You should say it again really fast so we can cut it into the into With the also just like pictures of delicious food and, and also pornography as well. Like we got to like uh, really kind of get it into the deep recesses of someone's head. I think, I think left propaganda just like is a little too chicken shit to do that. But like we really, there should have been this like subliminal messaging campaign this whole time. It's the only way it would ever win. Uh. All right. Vote no on Prop 22. Goodbye.